Yes, yes, Massive from Crew back once again with another video. And today we're gonna to talk about the Atari ST, the old time computer that we used to use in music and also personal computer. My, mine is uh, kind of still fall, look, almost falling apart. I've taken it out of the cupboard. I strung it up the other day, it was working really well, believe it or not, even though it's sort of falling apart. A very, very good machine. And this is what a lot of people used to run Cubase. The original Cubase, I believe a notator, came out on the Atari ST in the early days. Uh, similar to the same Cubase that you guys use now, but obviously there was no such thing as VSTs back then. And we used to have to use outboard equipment. Now, uh, for those of you trying to get one of these and get them set up, there's two models. You've got the, as far as I know, I believe this came out in about 1985. Uh, comment down below if you want to clarify that. Um, and um, this, this, this computer here is really, really uh, good if you want to run all the old retro uh, stuff. Uh, your, your new dials can run retro stuff as well. I mean, I, you know, I, I run an Akai S3000 um, and an S3200 um, XL. I run that out of my MIDI interface. Now, uh, the thing is with these, these old computers, to get them going, uh, if you want to use them on a standard monitor, you're going to have to get one of these. Uh, this is an Atari ST to RGB connector. And then from here, you want an RGB to SCART converter. And then you have to get one of your monitors, make sure your monitors have got like SCART on them. My, well, I've got a monitor lucky enough to found one that's got SCART on it. And it's also HDMI. So you could just sort of flick between the two if you want to fling on your Atari, which is great, right? And you're going to need a power cable, don't forget, which is going to go into this kettle lead looking, we call it a kettle lead, but it's like, if you look here, that's the power connector. So you connect that up to your plug. I mean, if you have a look on the back of the Atari now, this is just a, a look of what it used to look like. Look, on the back, you've got a modem port, you've got um, a printer port, you've got a hard disk port. Now that's interesting. I know, I've heard of some Avalons and all this kind of stuff that they used to use back in the day, but I didn't even get that deep with mine. Um, but uh, you, you've got an external floppy drive. And you, if you don't want to buy the, if you want to go original, original, I'm sure you can find an Atari monitor on like eBay now for about 25 quid. Don't quote me on it. Uh, but like I said, you, you know, it saves you having monitors all over the place. You could just have a second monitor in your studio. That's how I've got mine. And it's also got the television port uh, on the side because believe it or not, people used to use this for retro gaming. And this was like a gaming computer back in its time. And uh, they used to connect this to their TV and play games on it. Atari ST games, uh, comment down below if you know any Atari ST games uh, that you supply. I, I mean, Commodore Amiga was for me, and Commodore 64 was more popular back in those days. On the side here, you've got floppy disk drive. You can replace these if your one goes down. There's also a cartridge here. I believe this used to be used for uh, other stuff, sampling, games, whatever. Uh, the audio chips on this, as far as I remember, weren't all that good. Um, and here's, here's the ports that we used to use. So sticking to the retro gaming, um, to the retro um, music production on here you've got a MIDI in and out port so I'm going to talk you through how I'd go about setting this up and we go from there so basically once you've got your monitor all plugged up and everything's running you've got your copy of Cubase uh, you probably get a disc image of that old Cubase the old Mike Hunter one or you might even pick up one with a dongle because that's where your your dongle probably used to go in there back in the day I used to use a Mike Hunter one Shh. Right, so anyway, um, so basically you would connect a MIDI cable. Now, a MIDI cable, I'll show you what a MIDI cable looks like on the screen. A MIDI cable is like a five DIN cable. They used to use these to connect uh, decks as well, but they were quite a common cable. And what you do between your Akai and your um, Atari, on, and it will also work sim same similar principle for the Amiga, but the only thing is this has got a built-in MIDI port dedicated, yeah? Uh, Whereas on the Amiga, you have to use a breakout cable. But if you look here, the MIDI out of this, yeah, would go onto the MIDI in of your Akai. There's a MIDI in port on your Akai at the back there. This is my test Akai, by the way. Let me see which side. It's, it's, on, it's on this side here, look. So on that side there, see it? MIDI in. So you plug that MIDI out always goes into a MIDI in, yeah? And if you've got more than one device, 
there's a MIDI through port, not this out port here, don't make mix it up with this, it's the MIDI through port. So the next device would connect onto this, so you take it out of the through port and then in to the in on the next device and so on, so on, so on. Now, MIDI device, MIDI chat, MIDI is like, imagine like a MIDI, a MIDI is like a radio station or radio, or this channels, let's make, break it down. On a MIDI cable or on a whole MIDI network, there's channels and there's 16 channels. So you can have up to 16 things running on your sampler at once, right? Or up to 16 in total. So eight on your sampler one, eight on your sampler two, yeah? If you want more than 16 channels, you need more than one MIDI port, or you need a MIDI expander, which you can get them, which I can talk about in another video. So once you've strung it into, once you've connected the MIDI cables, you then need to come out of your output on your Akai. If you look on the back of your Akai there now, on the back of my Akai, X, this is the S3000, I've got a stereo out. So you, just to keep things simple, you could start with your stereo out, yeah? And your stereo out would go into an input on your mixing desk. Now the cables you need to use that for that is like, I believe it's uh, quarter inch jacks. And on the back of your mixer, you've got obviously inputs which go to your channel. So you say for example, channel one and two would be your Akai stereo outs. And then you would just plug in your connector. As you can see there, these are the jacks I'm talking about. And they would plug into the one and two channel of your mixer. That is basically how you go about wiring it up. Now, if you want to see a video on actually how to use Cubase 3, the old school one, smash the like button. If I get to 150 likes in this video, I'll do another video on how to actually set up and run Cubase with your Akai and your Atari. Yeah? So I hope that makes uh, sense, people. And that's going out to everybody who's been emailing me and messaging me for videos on how to set up your Atari. And it's basically the same principle for any MIDI equipment. You're going to have to have your main, you've got your master piece of equipment, which your sequencer's on, right? In my case, it's going to be my Akai S, Akai. My Atari S520, you've got your Cubase on here, this is your sequencer. Your sequencer is the master. These midis, they're slaves. That's how it works. Don't ask me where that came from, but it came from. Don't get into your conspiracies. But this is how it goes. This is the master, that sends out 16 signals to there. There's, two, there's also modes and stuff uh, to do with midi. And this device must be on either Omni which is all channels. So it doesn't matter what channel you send out of this device, it will then play it, whatever you send, it will, it will receive a signal. Or you can set it, turn to Omni to off and then assign each channel individually. So guys, I hope that has helped somebody out there trying to get into the retro tech. Smash the like button if you wanna see more. Please subscribe and share this video on your Facebook wall. Let's grow this channel. Love you to pieces. Take care, God bless, peace.